This is a short video to show you how to make a Bronze Age York Park Leith sword. It's quite a beautiful sword as you can see and um, the weight of it is about 750 grams which was a common weight for a uh, sword of its time. And um, the system we're going to use is a two-sided two uh, sand mould. So we have the box which has a hinge on it. It's not a system that you have to use, you can do a pinned box as well. But I find this suitable. So this sand is an oil based sand that compresses extremely well. It's just one of several systems you can use. Not typically Bronze Age in itself, but then we don't have evidence to definitely say they didn't sand cast things. So it's, yeah, for me, it's an acceptable route. In the first place of packing a mould, pack the base of it nice and tightly. Being quite careful not to um, heavily pack at the top of the box because I want to quite easily press the sword down without causing the sword to bend as I press it as well. So that's just about half the box packed tightly. Now that's a packed top part of the box. Being reasonably careful to make sure that if there's any lumps that have been compressed previously that I remove them and also look for any foreign bodies in there that might end up being at the surface of the uh, pore. As with all casting techniques, you need to be a little bit careful um, that you've stored your sand correctly and it hasn't got wet because you don't want to be pouring bronze into um, particles of water. Okay, there's um, a couple more areas to uh, load here. I'm not making it too high, I'd rather add more if I need it. Then with a smooth knife, this is a nice smooth edge on here, you can start palleting the sand down. As you can see I've got it loaded with a slight hill at the centre, so what you can do is you can draw from the centre out to the side, otherwise you're going to find you overpack the centre where your main body of the sword wants to go in. By putting a nice tilt on the blade, that will um, move the sand in such a way that it doesn't try to keep trying to pick it up. So it will move it nice and gently throughout its own sort of system. In the first place when you're loading it you'll notice it tearing and pulling what appears to be cracks into the sand. And then at the pouring cup what you can do is you can put a system there so that um, you load into that nice and tightly as well. With a big pour, what you don't want is you don't want your pouring cup collapsing and going down into the mould as you pour. And now all I'm going to do with this knife is sweep and keep sweeping. And not over compressing and you'll find that um, it starts to close your gaps up. There can quite often be a couple of little places that you want to sprinkle a little more onto. And now what I want 
to do is just check the level of the mould. There's, um, it's slightly, slightly below the surface. So what I'm going to do is just gently shuffle a little more on. Being extra sensitive now about them lumps. And pallet knife that around. When you're thinking about the pressure you want to use, pretty much treat it like stroking a cat or something and not pushing it to the ground. So it's super gentle. The better job you do here, the better job, the better sword's going to come out of the mould. The sword can always be cleaned after um, after it's been cast, but um, the reality is it shouldn't need very much at all. Really finding all the nice spots here. Take a little extra and load up this header point. And I will put a little bit more pressure on there. Because if that if anywhere's going to collapse, it's going to be this point. And when you try and separate your mould, um, the point will try and connect onto the opposite end. So what we've got now is we've got almost a polished finish right the way through. Make sure there's no lumps around the frame itself so that when your frame shuts and also in the hinge that will shut down nice and tightly. And then uh, we're going to use some regular talcum powder. And um, rather than using the fingers, we'll use a brush on this. Because this will be less aggressive on the sand than your hand. And this acts as an agent to stop the um, two sides sticking together. In the old days, they could have... Um, you can buy something called parting compound, but... Um, it's really no different to talcum powder, so it's not worth investing in. And then blow away with the surplus. <coughs> now it's time to lay down the sword. Pick up the sword and make sure that on both surfaces you've got no foreign bodies on it, so it's all nice and smooth. When this is laid down, I'm going to try and lay it flat. I'm going to lay the back end down first, and gently lay on to the top, moving that into the dead centre. 
I've got about an inch at the bottom of the mould so we know we're not going to push out and burn the bottom of the mould and now it's time to gently push this in trying to be trying to take this down to a level where it reaches about halfway and you can look in the edge and see if there's a gap anywhere at the moment there is even though I never pressed hard on that sand it's um, it was quite difficult to press that down and um, around the edge of the mould itself now I've got some little cracks where the sand has been pulled forward so what I'm going to do is keep my hand on top of the sword and just roll the thumb across them cracks towards the edge of the sword. If you come back further than um, you'd imagine about three quarters of an inch what that will assist is it will mean it will push sand up underneath the sword itself and um, fill up any minute gaps. If you've got really rough fingers, what well, I quite often have, it makes sense to put a um, put a uh, rubber glove on, which will give you a smoother smoother push. I'm confident that I've um, lifted all the sand up to the edge of the sword. So the sword is touching sand quite constantly all the way to the edge. Now I'm going to put a new layer of um, talcum powder over the whole thing because I've obviously irrigated them surfaces quite a bit. blow that free to make sure you haven't got any clusters of talcum powder at the edges because obviously they'll fill up too good and now close the box I'm using um, four positions to lock this top down, one in the middle, one at the end, and rely upon the hinge to do the job on the opposite end. If you're using this system, make sure you get screw heads down so they go underneath the underneath the edge of the wood so that when you uh, blow it off you're not hitting them screw heads. Right so reloading on the top obviously this is the first surface so I want to finally load on that because I don't want any lumps to land and jiggle the sword itself. gently pressing in a random fashion because uh, if I press down on one end without it fully being fully loaded you could arc the saw up again checking out removing lumps And you also need to tease a little bit 
forward into the pouring cup at this point so that that hasn't got hollow. And now from the back, just gently walk forward with the first compression, keeping the level of compression even all the way through. And push across the top of that because your fingers will create lots of little dips, become like caverns. And now we're loading to um, ramp it up in the middle a little bit. Right, so it's fully loaded. Now, what we need to do is uh, tamp it all down, get a good level of compression over the whole thing. To do this I use a, um, a panel beating hammer, try and keep the surface fairly, fairly smooth and it's not rare to see me wire wool that or plane that so it doesn't become like a, um, you know, it grips on the sand and picks it up. So this first wave of compression is gentle and you see that I'm starting putting the hand over the end of the pouring cup to stop it collapsing out of that point and being very even about the way I compress through here. If you do it too hard, what you'll do is you push the whole you push the whole sword down in the mould towards the opposite side. So that would be the desired effect. Now I'm finding the lumps on the hill. And I'm moving that into areas I want to get a bit more compression. So the most important thing now is we haven't got any hollows the spots in this because when we turn it down over then hollow spots will be a place that we can push the whole mould back. So that's the first beat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle this from left to right so when we flip it over we've got a clean face to land onto. And we start a second tamp. And as I mentioned before, the rule doesn't change. You start tamping from the hinge end towards the pouring cup. So I'm going to continue on tamping this until I've completed um, a series of four tamps on either side. That will give me eight hammered compressions. So 
So the box is fully tamped. We will now release the screw. worth checking as you pick it up that um, your, your sword isn't stuck in that side otherwise it's going to come and land down hard on this um, now as this is picked up you've got very little choice you've got to pick it up somewhere so press this down a little bit at the back Pop that pin in the back there and be quite gentle as we pick it to draw it back a little bit as you go rather than shunting it forward. And then there's going to be some little microscopic bits that have gone on the move, so we're blowing them out. And with some kind of round former, on this occasion I'm going to use a drill. I'm going to again support the back of the mould, but press, start pressing down through to open up a mouthpiece as a pouring cup. This cup doesn't need to be huge, but it definitely needs to be something to aim at. And then I'm going to compress in a rounded fashion so that it's quite obvious where the metal needs to get to. And I'm putting a little lane into the back of the um, into the back of the handle also just so that there's a little bit of weight to the metal once it hits the narrowest point. So it'll keep forcing it down into the um, mould. This technique is uh, described as um, a gravity cast. We're not going to be sucking the metal in and we're not going to be using um, a centrifugal force to get it in or anything like that, it's purely the weight of the metal bit driving its way down to the bottom. And the one other thing that's probably worth considering is where these drill points are on this mould, there's um, tiny little sockets of sand that are standing up, a very good likelihood that the metal would knock them off so I'd rather take them off and blow them out of the mould ok clear that hinge out make sure there's no more on the edges And that's good to go. When I land this, I'm going to land it gently and make sure that I'm square so I'm going to shuffle it. See, I'm being quite careful there because I don't want to spread the wood and crack that mould box. Now, because this is 750 grams, there's a reasonable chance with the weight of that, as that hot metal goes in, that could actually push the sand out. 
uh, particularly with some of the gassing that's going to try and take place. Although with this particular sand it, it carbonises very well and that means that um, it's less likely to try and uh, expand the box open. So this is just a little extra support. over as well. So I want to show you the pouring cut point. I also want to just check that out. Being very careful that I don't knock anything into the mould, but I believe that's nice. Okay, so there, that's what we have. So we're going to store that safely now. We're going to get our metal up to temperature. Um, we'll give it a pour and see what condition we can take a take a sword out from it. Good. successfully so we'll open it up and we'll see what we've got Good so far. looking pretty splendid. Brush away the surplus sand. Then we have one nice replica of a Ewart Park leaf. Very minor flash around the edge. But the mould in general is looking like a nice clean pork. Oh. 
Excellent. You've been watching Will Lord's YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed watching this sandcast York Park Leaf Sword. And um, if you would like to know more about what I do or attend one of my courses, you can visit my website www.will-lord.co.uk. Thanks for watching.